Nathan shared with me before service that he felt like he had something that he was supposed to say before the song. And uh, <clears throat> he wasn't really sure what he was supposed to say. I told him, welcome to my world. <laughs> um, I don't know where we're going today in the message. Okay, uh, I have these broad thoughts that God has given me, and, and as I work throughout the week, I would get a little bit here and a little bit there, but nothing actually cohesive. And so I do what any good man of God should do. I talk to my wife. And uh, she actually had quite a bit to share with me that kind of opened up a little bit. Um, does anybody know which of the Gospels does not talk about the birth of Christ? Anybody offhand? John. Mark? Mark. Matthew does, Luke does, John does, but in an entirely different way from Matthew and Luke, but, but Mark doesn't address it at all. And when you come together for a Christmas service, usually the pastor will read out of Luke. I'm not going to read out of Luke. We're going to go to John. So if you have your Bible, open with me to the book of John, chapter 1. Now, we are tremendously blessed in our fellowship. We have got so much talent in so many different areas. Um, you know, I know churches that are twice or even three times our size that, that don't have a worship team. And you, you saw a good number of people up here for worship. There are more of you out there that can get up here and help with worship. Um, we have men that organize and, and take care of our finances. We have men and women that step up to teach. Uh, and I believe there are more of you with those callings. But the thing that amazes me consistently, I don't talk with Steve and Angie about my messages. <coughs> <clears throat> I let them hear from God what songs are supposed to be in the worship and they trust me with the message I trust them with the worship and <clears throat> through this week the one thing that kept coming to me over and over and over again is the word light light and I thought it was very interesting um that during worship, we turned off all the lights. We had the shades closed. Uh, how long did it take you before your eyes adjusted? Not really very long. Uh, it probably took you longer when the lights came back on. <clears throat> but John gives us his view of the Christmas story. And it's markedly different from Matthew and Luke's. So in John chapter 1, verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And we have a little bit of a parenthetical statement in verse 6. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. Do we, do we have any Hebrew scholars in here? 
that's not, John is not his name. John was, is the anglicized version of his name. His name was Giannis. Okay. Uh, just like Jesus' name, they didn't call him Jesus. They, they called him Yeshua. The book of James, they anglicized that to get the backing of King James. Okay. Does it make a lot of difference? It really doesn't. God knows who we're talking about. God saw all this way back when. Okay? So when you pray and you use the name Jesus, he still hears you. He knows who you're talking to. He's not looking around for some guy named Jesus. Okay? <laughs> Verse 7. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light <clears throat> that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. It is interesting to me throughout Scripture over and over and over again, God, and by extension Jesus, is often referred to in the same thought as light. Um, <clears throat> you know, I believe that you can learn something everywhere. I believe that um, if you have your ears open, you can learn wisdom from the youngest of children to the oldest of men. Okay? And uh, I'm not really sure which of my family brought this up first, but I know that I've heard Benjamin talk about it and I've heard Christy talk about it. Um, when you're in a dark room and you turn on the light, assuming that your electricity works like mine, what happens? Yeah, the dark's gone. You notice there's no contest? The, the, the darkness doesn't wrestle with the light to try and maintain its place? No. When the light comes on, what happens? The darkness disappears. It's gone. It's instantaneous. We, we can't even measure how quickly it happens. One of the things that I fail at often as a pastor as I tend to get caught up in the teaching, the minutia of God's Word. I love that as detailed as I can get in His Word, His Word is much more detailed than I can comprehend. I'm always surprised. I read passages that I've read over and over and over again, and all of a sudden I get some new insight. I get some new um, wisdom. But one of the things that I fail to do regularly, and I'm going to change this, help me change this, the sum total of all that we do here is for what purpose? What are we supposed to be about? Glorify God and spread the good news. <clears throat> to glorify God, actually, what does the uh, Westminster... Glorify Shorter. God and enjoy Him forever. To glorify God and enjoy Him forever. Mm -hmm. Enjoy God. What was the last directive, the Great Commission that Jesus gave? To be His witness. We are to bear witness about Him, what He has done. See, something that nobody in the world can take away from me is what God has done for me. 
John starts off and he talks about the word and he immediately associates it with light. Now it's interesting, uh, in Isaiah chapter 9, flip back there real quick, Isaiah chapter 9. In my Bible it's on page 729. Might not be there in yours though. Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah 9, I'm going to pick up in verse 1. But there will be no gloom for her who was in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he has made glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, and they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of the oppressor has been broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the trampling warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. Why? For to us a child is born. To us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, <clears throat> Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Amen. See, this, this, this whole message, this, this passage is about salvation. What does the darkness have to do with the light or the light to do with darkness? They can't coexist. When you come to the cross and you come to salvation, <coughs> you give up everything. It's a gift. It's, it's free. It's handed to you. But you got to stop being you. I got to stop being me. I've got to more and more be like Jesus. That's where the light is. That's, that's where life is. Did you notice in John that he paralleled light and life? You know? For us, we don't have life without light. We don't have food. Quite honestly, we lose a lot of joy. It's why the suicide rate is significantly higher in the Pacific Northwest than anywhere else in America. Almost twice as high. Today is the day of salvation. We have it so good in America. We are so blessed. But I think maybe it's become a trap for us. If you're not sure about this, let me just ask you one simple question. Would you celebrate Christmas as much if there were no gifts, if there were no parties, if there were no lights, if there were no get-togethers, if you didn't hear Bing Crosby for at least a month out of the year? <laughs> 
We've let the celebration take place of what we celebrate. All of the music today pointed us to what we celebrate. That light has come into the world. And there's only one of two responses to the light. We go back to John. I want to just point this out real quick to you because he lays out a contrast. There's only two ways that you can respond. First, um, back up in verse 4 and 5, this is just a side note. It says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. So there's, there's really no contest, is there? The light overcomes the darkness. That's the end of the story as far as that goes. But then jump down to verse 9. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. Now see, everyone means everyone. All of us. Every single one of us. There's, there's no exclusion here. Okay? He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. See, there's only two ways to respond here. You can choose to not know him because he has, as of today, you can't walk around with the excuse that I didn't hear this, I didn't know. Because today, I'm telling you, you know. So you can choose to not know him and you can continue living your life the way that you're living your life. But you have to do so with the understanding that on a day there will come an accounting. If you choose not to know him, God is going to ask you why. And the greatest excuse you can have is going to blow away his dust. Because God sent his son into the world, and you rejected his son. Now, the other side of this coin, look at what the alternative is. If you choose to know him, but to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And then further down in verse 16, it says, For from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Look, I'm going to lay it out for you very simply. Okay? Our formula for salvation... Uh, the formula that I, I use up here is from Ephesians chapter 2. Grace plus faith equals salvation. Okay? Unto good works. Okay? The works are not unto salvation. You can't earn your way into the kingdom of God. You, you can't be good enough. You just can't. Okay? But, his grace is sufficient. <clears throat> and he gives us the faith whereby we can believe. Okay? So there's, there's the equation unto salvation. Now, you take any one of those objects out, and the equation doesn't work. Okay? You take out grace, and what do you have faith in? You take out faith, and the grace is there, but it's not fulfilled. It's unrealized. 
You take out the works, you really haven't believed the first two parts. Now, I'm not, I am not saying that, great, that works are required unto salvation. I am saying that salvation will produce works. That's the whole thing that John is talking about, chapter 2. Uh, James, chapter 2. Okay? If you are saved, it will make you a different person. You can't be the same that you were beforehand. That person has died. You have been resurrected into newness of life, and that newness is going to reflect the light of Jesus Christ. Every one of us is a light. If you have accepted Jesus Christ, you cannot help but be a light. Now, there are some of us, and at times all of us, you know, we hide our light under a bushel. We got to come up with a better saying for that because a bushel, I don't even know how much a bushel is. You know, hide it under a bucket. I know what a bucket is. Okay? And we've all done that at different points. So we're all in the same boat, and thank God His grace covers that. Okay? But we need to remember. That if we acknowledge him before man, he will acknowledge us before the Father. And if we deny him before man, he will deny us before the Father. See, there's a little checks and balances so that we know where our salvation is. Where are we in relation to salvation? That's the whole point of the book of James, the book of 1 John, to let us know where we stand in relation to God. It's all through grace plus faith unto salvation. Works will come out of that. Now look, there's only two options in this. Okay? You can embrace and accept the light. Okay. Scripture says that the way that we do that, Steve actually quoted that uh, passage this morning. If we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Okay. But two things that, that Scripture talks about that come after salvation that are proof unto salvation, the first one is that you, you will do good works. There, there will be good that comes out of it. The second one is that you endure. It says, he who endures to the end will be saved. Okay? Because there's a lot of people that do what I call the, the youth church camp salvation experience. They've had an emotional moment, and that emotion lasts about as long as it takes for them to get back home and, and settle back into the routine. There's no lasting change in that kind of salvation. That is not a faith that is exhibited unto salvation. It's a faith in the moment. It's a faith in the emotion. Unfortunately, as people, we stink at emotional things. We're not very good at them. Because I can go from being way up to way down really quickly. All it takes is a tractor on East Side Highway. <laughs> <laughs> and that can just ruin my day. Okay? Finally decide what I want to eat. Oh, I got some of this. And I open the refrigerator and Christy says, Oh, I didn't think you were going to eat that, so I threw it away. <laughs> Great. Now I'm going to go get behind a tractor and make my day complete. <laughs> okay? If we are saved, there will be a noticeable difference in our lives. People around you, those closest to you, are going to be able to tell something's different. And they might do it, they're, they're do it one of two ways. The first one is, I love it. When I have never verbally spoken to a person and they come to me and say, Are you a Christian? Absolutely. I love that because I was not cognizant of the fact that I'm living my life out in a way that would reflect that I'm a Christian. There are also those people that are going to push you away because you're different, you're changed. Wow, hey, you want to go drinking tonight? Boo. <laughs> Your life is going to change. Those things that used to satisfy you are not going to satisfy you anymore. Okay? So, here it is, short in a nutshell. The light of the world has come into the world. 
You have to choose whether or not you're going to accept it. You choose to embrace the light, God will call you son or daughter. You don't accept it. You know, I get so tired of this crap. People say all the time, oh, we're all God's children. No, we are not. We're all God's creation. Absolutely. But only those that believe, those that receive and believe, get the right to be called his children. Not the privilege, the right to be called children of God. You choose not to receive. You live your life the way that you think you want to do it. And I would encourage you, live it up good. Because that's all you're going to get. Three score ten years. Eighty if we're lucky. And then after that, payment comes due. And you have eternity to regret your decision. Okay? So today, as pastor at Jesus Community Church, I am laying out before you. Scripture says today is the day of salvation. Because not one of us is guaranteed a tomorrow. Not one of us. Okay? So today is the day of salvation. If you have not been saved, you know you have not been saved. Make today the day. If you're not sure, you've prayed the prayer, but, but you're not really sure, I would encourage you, get into 1 John. He, he lays it out for us simply. Hey, look, this is what the, the saved look like. This is what the unsaved look like. You hold that up in front of a mirror and you got to say, am I like this or am I like this? Okay? So, the light has come into the world. And we celebrate that light at Christmas, knowing that's not the end. That, that's not even the best part. The best is yet to come. Uh, World War II, the invasion of Normandy, Winston Churchill said something that I, I thought was very profound. He said, uh, this may not be the beginning of the end, but it might be perhaps the end of the beginning. And that's what Christmas is. It's not the end. It's not really even the beginning, but it is the end of the beginning. Because now a way has been made. Now a way has been made.